Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is May 11th, 2010, and this is Day 9 Daily number 114. I would like this to uh, work, but it appears my Flash Media Live encoder uh, just has died several times on me, so I'm hoping that this stays stable this time. Whew! I'm going to not really do any introduction. I'm pretty much going to jump right into the game and just pray that uh, it actually is live and actually is working. And if it is, sounds good to me. So um, we're going to jump right into this game. It's going to be uh, of Jinro. So many of you have probably seen this stuff before, uh, heard me say some of this stuff beforehand. But, you know, no big deal. We'll just go ahead and jump right back into things. And uh, it appears that everything is recording properly for once so that is that's fantastic so sorry for the gigantic delay on everything but we're just gonna jump directly into this game so here we go we have Jinro spawning here yes there he is there is the man of the hour the man who makes the ghosts and so I think the big thing that's causing my Adobe Flash encoder to crash is the fact that um, I'm trying to bounce between many windows and whenever I seem to do that, it seems to just give up on me. So um, hopefully it will not give up on me, because I really would like to watch this series. It's pretty cool. Um, this game is between Jinro and Z-Pux. Z-Pux is um, another famous, strong European player, along with everyone else in Europe. Just very, very good. Um, and this is from the semifinals of the Zotac Cup. Now, I'm going to say right now that Jinro is going to get ghosts, and I want to just have that on the brain. Um... I think I, what I'm going to do is just disable my webcam for the remainder of this cast, because it seems to be causing quite a bit of lag on this thing. So you won't get to see my face for that much of it, but, you know, no big deal. Not the biggest deal in the world. So I want to have ghosts on the brain here. And there's some obvious uses for ghosts against Protoss. We can EMP all their units. We can get uh, all their shields disabled. Um, but... You know, against Zerg, it might be a little bit less intuitive. I mean, there's some obvious things like if Zerg, say, has a bunch of infestors, we can obviously do some sort of magic there. We can EMP those. But the big thing I want everyone to be aware of is the sniper round ability. The fact that we can bypass armor, do 45 damage, and it only costs us 25 energy. I think that is an unbelievably important thing to note. Just 25 energy for the ability to one-shot a lot of those smaller units and two-shot a lot of the bigger ones, or even the ability to take out Broodlords very, very easily if we have lots of ghosts in our army. So at this point in time, Jinro's doing a pretty normal opening. As we can see, we've already watched some of the replay. That's about as far as we got before my stream crashed. <laughs> but, um, I want to talk a lot about just general opening concepts because a lot of times, anytime someone wants to do something like make ghosts, they'll go overboard. That will be the cool unit of their play. So they will make, you know, mass ghosts. They'll get like five racks doing nonstop ghost production. And that's really not the way to go about it. That's actually pretty, pretty exceptionally weak. Um, it's a lot more important to do something like be a little bit more smooth on everything. Um, to try to have good lead-ins, to try to have good follow-throughs, all that sorts of stuff. We want to have very good interactions with the rest of our rest of our play. So we shouldn't just rush for ghosts. So we're going to see Jinro do a pretty nice, creative, typical opening uh, with a little bit of a twist, being the Nitro Packs. But I do want to come here and discuss this extractor for a little bit of time. Um, you'll hear me say a lot in the original Brood War that you really should not take an extractor unless you have a very clear plan of what to do with it because i mean a lot of times you'll be back home and you'll be having one of your gas geysers let's say it's protoss versus protoss and you'll think to yourself if i take my opponent's gas then i can get my second gas way earlier on and then i'm double gassing against a single gas therefore i win you know you just sort of assume um that you're going to be in fantastic shape regardless but the problem comes when um you take that gas geyser, you're a little bit off in terms of your money. It's a little bit hard to be able to, um, whoa, excuse me, it's a little hard to be able to uh, do a lot of the stuff that you would ordinarily want to be doing because you've interrupted your production um, by spending money on this gas geyser. It takes, uh, it, it comes at a really, really inconvenient uh, time taking this gas. So be very, very careful 
whenever you do end up taking that Gas Geyser to make sure that um, it doesn't botch the rest of your play. So we're seeing Z-Pucks do a little bit of annoying stuff, just rush right up here. And we're already starting to see some of the effects of going for this Gas Geyser early. I want you to note that right here in this first Geyser, Jinro, um, he pulled one guy out of Gas, and that was actually intentional. I spoke to him before the game. Ah, I keep scrolling to the right. <laughs> I, I talked to him before the game and asked him whether or not um, he w that, that was intentional, and he said absolutely it was, because since his Gas Geyser got taken, he just built up money and took an expansion. And I think most people are familiar with the idea of going one Rax Reaper, getting a whole bunch of Reapers out and doing a ton of damage uh, that way. But he's also getting the Nitro Packs in there, you know, and getting the expansion. Very, very typical, ordinary play. And only after, you know, he kills off this Gas Geyser, that's the only time that he really started to need gas anymore. You know, perfect, perfect, perfect timing. So we, we are seeing a bunch of uh, little Reapers popping out right now for Jinro. And Reapers are good for many, many reasons. Obviously, they can do the harassment and put a lot of pain on the opponent. Two Reapers is a good amount to go for, because with two Reapers, we can snipe Zerglings. Uh, it's two shots to kill Zergling, so two Reapers make that really easy. Um, and obviously, we can kill drones, we can scout, we can do all that good stuff. And see, here's some of the sniping that goes on. One, two, easy. And note that, like, it didn't really take much damage at all. And then popping here and killing stuff. But these Reapers do something that I call pinning the opponent. Um, so a contain would be if there were a bunch of Terran units planted right here, walling in his opponent so he couldn't leave. But Reapers obviously aren't doing that. They're not camping outside the front. But they're doing what I call pinning, which is they have this threat of being able to bounce into the back of the base. And apparently shoot at the Menk statue because he just didn't look so good. Pretty hideous statue. If we uh, want to rotate around and look at him. Ugh, with his dogs. But with these Reapers... You make the Zerg feel like it's a big risk to be able to move out. So Zerg wants to stay back. I mean, even just look at the mini-map. I'm just going to scroll over here to this uninteresting part of the map and just look how Terran has pretty much complete freedom to move through this entire top area. And Zerg has everything very tightly clustered. In fact, the only things that are far away from the base is this one Overlord that is in a completely not useful location. I mean, really, this Overlord is not going to be doing any good there whatsoever. Um, and this Overlord, which is doing a little bit of spotting for the Reapers. I mean, very, very, very little movement out into the middle, thanks to these Reapers. They're doing a very, very good job of that. So here is the Zelnaga scan and all that good jazz. Um, so we do see that the, uh, he's making some ghosts now, so we're getting a little bit excited. And I just want you to think a little bit about these sniper rounds. I'm not going to just give away a bunch of stuff and say, he's going to do that, and then pray that you remember. But start thinking about creative things that can happen with sniper rounds. One thing I'm thinking right now is, gee, if I get these ghosts, um, they're a little expensive on the gas, as we can see. They're 150, 150. But um, if I can get a good number of ghosts, I'll build up a good amount of sniper rounds. I'll build up a good amount of energy. So if I push out, that means that I can snipe off things like banelings that are out there. I can snipe off all sorts of good stuff. So, um, it makes me feel like a lot of timing pushes early on are, are possible. It makes me want to move out if I can. I feel like the timing, um, I'm just going to make sure my stream is actually still working. <laughs> because, as we know, it has crashed about five times, so hooray! It seems that my webcam is what was screwing everything up, so I'm just going to leave this off for once. So, uh, sorry guys, my bad, I didn't mean to. Sincerest apologies. <laughs> I just want to say that there have been, uh, 12,000 unique refreshes of this stream, so, um, that would probably explain that, uh, a lot of people have been trying to watch and it's been crashing, and, uh, totally my bad, it's completely on my end. I'm just trying to get this new Ustream setup working right, and it's been a little wonky with me. I need to... You know, I'm probably going to schedule a stress test in a few days here, where I just watch some random ridiculous games and try to get things to work better. But anyways, back to this game with all this amazing Reaper action going on here. Um, so obviously we're seeing that he's doing a lot of damage here. Perhaps not directly, perhaps not going up and killing things off. Um, but at the very least, freaking Zerg out and buying so much time. Oh my god, so much time's being bought. Uh, now, another thing I like about this build, again, ghosts are the central reason I'm selecting this replay for the daily, but 
there's all the other workings of this build that are very important to note. These barracks, I was worried about them being able to constantly produce stuff with these three barracks producing. This is kind of a lot of money um, that we're implying we're going to have. But what Jinro is doing is he's making reapers out of these. Now, I want you to note over here in this resource menu that a reaper is 50-50. Um, and what I would call that is a unit that is very gas heavy, even though they're even um, in terms of, of cost, the minerals and the gas. Anytime that you have an even split, you're going to end up with a wild excess of minerals. And Reapers, you'll see here, take 40 seconds to build. That's a very long build time. So in other words, by building these Reapers, we get everything that's good from Reapers. The ability to pin, the ability to scout, the ability to kill shit and freak our opponents out. Uh, I didn't mean for that to rhyme. But it also, resource-wise, gives us time to set these other barracks up while keeping these other barracks active. And pretty good timing on these gas geysers. Initially, I was feeling a little, uh, about the timing of these. But um, in that first time when I had this stream up and it ended up falling apart and crashing, <laughs> um, this whole timing looked a lot better to me. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So we have Jinro, who's continuing to make more barracks. I'm also noting that no upgrades have been started yet. So I feel like no timing push is coming yet. And I want you to note how nice these Reapers are not just for this build, but for any build that involves a lot of barracks. These Reapers are doing a great job of pinning the opponent. I mean, he loses one Reaper, kills off a bunch of Zerglings, and then freaks Z-Pucks out about this hatch. And in the meantime, we're having tons of times to build up Ghosts. And uh, once again, Ghosts give you that moral victory, right? <laughs> we love getting Ghosts. And some more nice shots going on by these Reapers. Speed Zerglings are quite good at dealing with Reapers. So you have to be very, very careful about that, but still, phenomenal control by, by Jinro. Doing a lot of damage there. So we have uh, just more Marines being made, the usual. I kind of want to see more Ghosts because I just want to see a nice timing push. Note that this already has 86 energy. It's almost at 90 energy, so we can do almost four round shots with a sniper round. So that means that we can knock out a lot of really key units. Perhaps if I opened up with a bunch of marines and ghosts and my opponent made banelings, I would be able to snipe those banelings before they ever came. So that seems like pretty awesome. Z-Pucks, on the other hand, is just opening up very standard, very strong, getting Hydralis up, getting the range up. Already has an infestation pit, already has an evolution chamber upgrading. Excellent, excellent, excellent play. Now I am noting that Jinro's a little bit behind on food. That's because Reapers are low in terms of food cost and high in terms of time to build cost so they will end up uh giving you a build where you get behind on food but that's okay because they set you up to do something like this where you have three barracks with reactors which is a lot or as we're going to see two barracks with reactors but still a lot of barracks with reactors and we're getting a little eager because we're seeing a lot of ghosts be produced so there's going to be a little bit of a dead period and Looks like Jinro's ability to put pressure on is diminished a little bit in this time. So I feel like as we go to the unit counting station, we're seeing they're both fairly even in terms of worker count. But I feel like Z-Pucks can swing way far ahead because look, he finally has overlords here, finally has all that good jazz. So this, I would say, is a dangerous spot for Terran because Zerg gets to do whatever the hell he wants. So notice that just... Just like 10 seconds ago, I was saying that they were pretty close in terms of drone, or excuse me, in terms of worker count. And look now, um, Jinro is at 52 SCVs, Z Pucks is at 63 drones. He suddenly jumped ahead by 10, just because he has a little bit of leeway. I'm actually going to leave it on this unit production station just to sort of uh, highlight this. And Jinro, we're just going to briefly say, uh, is transitioning into everything else pretty normal. We're going to come back to this cloak, which is we're going to see is absolutely genius in this game. Uh, but largely Marine Army. All the upgrades are coming out right now. They're almost done. And looks like Z-Pucks has a pretty well nice and operational expansion here at the bottom right. There's a pretty good uh, expansion here at his natural and his main. He has his evolution chambers morphing. Just the usual Zergling, Hydra, Baneling, and Fester combination. The non-Roach style against Terran. So I'm going to return back here to the resource tab. So you heard me talk a lot about how this is a good time for Zerg. So what does that imply for Terran? Well, basically it means that there's two things that I'm thinking of. The first one is that if we get ghosts, 
there might be a period of time where we can't do anything. And also, if we open with Reapers, there might be a period of time when after our Reaper Harassed sorts of, sort of diminishes, where we're a little bit, uh, where we can't really be active with our Reapers anymore. So for instance, Lucifron deals with this fact. Um, he does open one Barracks Reaper and he harasses his opponent, but then at his factory, he makes Hellions with a reactor add-on. And uh, at this old barracks, where he opened up, making just three Reapers, he starts making Marauders. So right when the Reaper Harass ends up finishing, he moves out with this Marauder Hellion composition. In other words, when the aggression tones down on the Reapers, the aggression pops up with another mix of units. So what I'm seeing is the Reapers, um, the aggression tapering down, exactly as expected, but then nothing's exactly coming out from Jinro. So I... It might be okay. You don't absolutely have to be aggressive against the Zerg nonstop, 100% of the time in the game, regardless of what the Zerg's doing. Um, but what I'm saying is, it just concerns me, especially on a map like Metalopolis, where a passive Zerg is a happy Zerg. A passive Zerg can take his entire half of the map. I want some way to be more in my opponent's face as Terran. And I think the Ghosts are a pretty cool choice. The reason I'm so excited about this idea of using a lot of sniper rounds is that we don't need to wait for medevacs or anything like that. We can actually just get a bunch of barracks and continue to be very, very, very aggressive. And look at this. Seven Ghosts. Now, something that um, I think is StarCraft One Syndrome is that Ghosts in StarCraft One were these flimsy garbage units that really were only good for, like, lockdown. Uh, they didn't really have very much good stuff about them. But here, note that ghosts actually have a hundred life. That's a pretty significant amount of life. That's a lot. It can take some serious damage. And note that it doesn't have any modifiers that really get in its way. It doesn't have plus, or it's not light or armored, so it's not taking extra damage from a lot of units. In addition, look at the damage. 11 damage plus 11 versus light. I want you to note that Marauders, that everyone uh, for a while was saying, oh, they were so imbalanced. Note that um, the base damage on a Marauder is 10 with plus 10 versus Armored. They basically do the exact same amount of damage, except Marauders do it to uh, Armored units. Ghosts do it to Light units. Ghosts are great against Hydras, Lings, all sorts of those Light units. They're a good unit to just do damage, completely unlike in StarCraft 1. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting to see that as a unit, the Ghost has so much versatility, um, just in terms of being able to, you know, get in the fight and, and bolster the strength of your army. We're getting to hear some of the awesome sound effects by that. And of course, uh, as I check my audio repeaters, I note that you guys as well are getting to hear those awesome sound effects because I finally figured out uh, how to work with my onboard audio. And now here's a little bit of brilliance. Actually, I should say a lot of bit of brilliance. So in this game, overlords do not detect. You must upgrade them to an overseer in order to detect. So this means that if you cloak, your Zergi opponent cannot see you unless he has an overseer. So all my concerns about, well, can you get in there and snipe the right units? Can you get in there and actually EMP when you want to? Absolutely, just cloak. See you later, Infestors. I don't think so. So I'm actually going to slow this battle down so we can get a good look of what's going on here, and I'll pop up the uh, the health. So here come you heard some sniper rounds go off on these back units as everything slowly begins to pull away. But if we also have some banelings in the back here, those are juicy candidates for a nice good EMP or er, uh, sniper round. And then here he dashes forward and kills off all these units. That was awesome, right? That little. That little move there, and then look, there were some sniper rounds going off on the uh, infestors. I think after that little, <laughs> and we should be back. I am just talented at crashing my stream. I am just the best person in the universe at ensuring that the stream figures out a fantastic way to crash at all given points in time. So hopefully everything is uh, working okay-ish. Lee, I'm seeing thousands of people joining and quitting simultaneously. <laughs> so I am going to pray that it ends up coming back. So it looks honky-dory is what I'm hearing in the stream. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I got to be careful with this media encoder, man. It just... I'm going to have to talk to Gunrun, the uh, very clever fellow over at GLHF TV. 
to figure out what it is that causes this thing to crash and to make sure that that does not happen anymore. So until then, I literally am not going to touch anything. I'm going to open no webcams. I'm going to do nothing off air, or excuse me, off camera, and I'm going to make sure that this ends up working. So I like this little attack by Jinro. Uh, if we ended up missing that, I'm going to pull back just a pinch, um, and I'm going to just stream through this, just blast right through this. Look at this nice cloak to get up here, EMPing all the infestors, so no fungal growth for you. Uh, except, of course, that fungal growth. And I think one of my favorite parts about this attack is this nice little pullback by Jinro. He got in there, he got Zerg to back off for long enough to kill off this expansion, and then he just returned home. I think that that's very... It's very easy to not do that. <laughs> it's very easy to, you know, start an attack and just say, you know what, I'm, I'm going for it, you know. An attack is only an attack if it, it is that way from start to finish. Really, it's not. You can totally pull back like this at any time. And look, Jinro's now setting up his expansion, so everything should be pretty good. And notice that Jinro's still getting ghosts. Look at these two barracks. Yes, making lots and lots of ghosts. And of course, we have a ton of Marines also pouring out here. Um, but I love the use of getting that cloak early on. Because now it means that that sniper round that was so good, it can now be even more effective. And that EMP that we wanted to be good can be even more effective because we can dash right up there. So now these overseers have to be pretty much a standard part of the army. Now, if you end up sniper rounding the overseer, which might be a little expensive, but, you know, what is that? Five sniper rounds? I mean, that's plenty um, energy left over for your ghost. So you can get in there and EMP whatever makes you happy. Uh, but I'm especially interested about ghosts in a period before this time. Because look at the food counts. Jinro at 174 and z at uh, 186. I mean, it's that sort of thing that... I, mean, I wonder, is there a good way to move in here a lot earlier with these ghosts? And I mean, here's a great example of ghost fail. <laughs> Didn't see the, uh, the overseer early enough. Only got four snipes off. And of course, all the ghosts ended up falling. But I mean, earlier on, the Zerg would not nearly have this nice of an army composition. And if you can have some way to just blast out a bunch of barracks early on, your Zerg opponent kind of needs to rely on getting some good Baneling hits off if he really wants to be able to uh, be very effective against your uh, unit mix. So you can snipe those off, and I'm really eager about that. This is a great unit mixture by Z Pucks, just absolutely fantastic, and he's upgrading. But, um, in terms of Jinro's play, I love the Reaper opening, I disliked that dip in the middle, and then I love the cute stuff with these ghosts afterwards, with the cloak and the sniper rounds. So I'm thinking, is there some way to accelerate that? Oh, look at that nice EMP. Is there some way to move out with these ghosts a little bit earlier on? And look at the snipe! Oh, see ya! And, uh, you might want to cloak the rest of those. And the sniper on the Bane Link, see how easy that was. And by the way, for any of you who played the original Command & Conquer, the snipe on the ghost sounds identical to the commando fire. Uh, in the, ooh, whoopsie daisies, in the original Command & Conquer. So that was a pretty, <laughs> two brilliant infestations right there. No cloaking for you. So I like this response by Z Pucks. This is just pretty much the standard, um, damn good army mix. I would probably like even more Zerglings in here. But I just want to briefly say, the reason I like this Zerg mix is because Marauders are not very good against Hydralisks. Banelings are really good against Marines. So you have, like, the nice against Marauders, the nice against Marines. And the Zerglings, I think, need to be here to take a little bit of extra damage to let the Banelings get up there. And Infestors are good. I'm not going to spend time explaining that. They have, like, three of the best spells in the game <laughs> for relatively inexpensive. So here comes another nice cloak, and see there's a snipe going off there, and can he snipe this? Uh, a little bit late. Some more snipes going off on the Overseer. I just love this snipe, because I mean, look at the energy. I'm actually going to pause this. Again, the P key is broken in replays for some reason. Look, each of these ghosts still has a snipe around on him. Some have two, some have three. This guy has like, what, seven? <laughs> Almost. I mean, plenty, plenty, plenty of, of uh, energy to do lots of amazing sniping. And this is starting to look more like an actual army composition, as opposed to a gimmick. 
a lot of times, you know, um, for instance, the Void Ray, a lot of people were using it as a gimmick strategy to run in and, say, kill off the layer in the back of your base because uh, you weren't watching. And if you are watching, it's completely flimsy. What's so impressive about this is that it's a stable part of this army. So we have some nice battles going on. We have some nice duking it out action occurring. And we do have the uh, ghost just sort of wandering around. This is, uh, I suppose, a little passive, but I don't really think that that's anything to do with the build or Jinro. I just think that's this map. On Metalopolis, you often get to a point where it's just like, Welp, that's that. You, know, you just have to kind of hang out. What I would think more is, I want to get this Marine Marauder Ghost composition up earlier. And then I want to incorporate some more variety in at this point. Maybe get some tanks in here as well. Because there's going to be some nice tank placement by Jinro right here in the later stages of the game. But now that we're actually starting to move forward. And both players are maxed and ready to aggress against one another. Look how fast that died. Again, Ghosts range 6 and do 22 damage a shot against Hydralisks. So that's going to help out a ton. How many Ghosts does he have? Jesus, going to hold my little control button. Wow. That's 10 Ghosts. That's a lot. And there's the good old EMP. I love this cloaked EMP composition. Good scans going off. And notice one thing that I like um, is this scan right here. This is more from a game design perspective why I like this scan. Because what this means is that um, you're not always just sitting back muling in your base and just constantly trying to get as many extra minerals as you can uh, thanks to mules. You do want to save that up to scan to get your ghosts into good positions to EMP things. And I mean, as we go over here, note how little purple we're seeing down here at the bottom half. I'm going to hit slow it down and hit play for this battle. But I mean, none of these units down here have any energy. It's only these overseers and these infestors up top. So there's some banelings ended up getting off. Yeah, here's a whole bunch of banelings rolling in. Not the best Oh, there's some nice sniping going on right there. He got several Banelings. I'll actually rewind that just a pinch to uh, highlight that. I'm going to have to speed it up. That's exactly what I'm talking about. and Exactly the sort of thing that I'd be eager to see occur in the earlier stages of the game. So we're going to speed this up. It's these Banelings that are right here you're going to see get sniped. So these first few, these poor Marines, end up getting demolished. And there, they get cooked. But here comes a whole bunch of Banelings just get taken out right here. See you later, Banelings. Excellent stuff. A few of these guys get off, and you can hear a lot of snipes going down on these front rounds. Uh, on a lot of these Hydralisks. Even more, if you can, if I can, like, turn up my, my volume a little bit. And, oh, look at that nice snipe on that back Infester. The other Infestor going down. Now, Z-Pucks just happens to just have a really good macro. And ends up coming out um, ahead this battle. But, of course, Jinro has, what, there's five barracks here. Oh, well, that's six. And then there's, like, another million back here. So he's, like, fine in terms of the uh, the money. And he has, there's the other engineering base. He's just upgrading 3-3, no problem. 3-3 is really, really important to have against Broodlords because then the Banelings, or excuse me, the Broodlings don't really do very much. That's something that the little one pointed out to me earlier today that I liked quite a lot. So I just figured I'd pass that little information along. Um, but, so now the question is, what happens for the remainder of the game? And a lot of times, this is the part where people have struggle issues where they'll lose in a position like this. Like, if they're tearing, they'll lose, and they'll avoid doing the ghost strategy. But I think what ends up... Because I'll, I'll tell you right now, Jinro does lose this game, despite being completely awesome. Uh, and I think it's because he just values getting way too many Marauders. I mean, there are only three barracks here making Marines with the reactors. All the rest of this, Marauders, 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 Marauders... Oh, no, the Ghost. Marauder... Marauders just finished out of these. More Marauders. And Marauders are actually pretty... Pretty bad against Hydralis. Pretty bad against everything that isn't a roach. They're okay against Zerglings, I guess. Um, just because you can... Well, I don't want to say okay against Zerglings. You know, if you're in small numbers, they're okay against Zerglings. But in large numbers, even then, Marauders are pretty bad against Lynx. And coincidentally, Z-Pux makes Ultralis, so this choice of Marauders ends up being great. And you'll note that um, before this battle, Jinro was behind by, like, 50 food, right? It was 120 to 170. And then all these Ultras came out, and I really think that that's what got Jinro 
like, back in this game ready to participate. This Ultralist against Marauders is just, like, so not close at all. This is looking not close, but this is not a result of the Ultralist. This is the result of that giant food differential. And, um, I also forgot to point out that there was a nuclear bomb that went off here. And, see, this is one of those things that I call a hallmark of expert play. In the midst of this gigantic crisis, right, this huge group of units just barreling down your front door, if you can have enough focus to counter drop your opponent and get in his face, you will drastically improve your win percentage. You occasionally hear me talk about things like bumping it up by maybe three, five percent, but this will like bump it up like 20 percent. That's like one of those like amazing things that you really just need to do consistently to be good. And again, Cloak lets Ghost do all the sorts of amazing stuff that they want to do regularly. It lets you snipe, it lets you EMP, and it lets you nuke. I mean, that cloak, I didn't realize quite how important that was until I was watching this game. Just amazingly saucy ghost usage. And so, this is pretty much that. So I'm just, And there's a bunker that was built and salvaged, so... Its purpose was served. And we're gonna see that Z-Pux is making some Ultralisks still, um, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the boat with Z-Pucks. I want to make Ultralisks work. <laughs> they were, like, my favorite unit in the original Brood War, so I want them to be as equally awesome to that. So we see this big Marauder Ball moving out right now. I think this is just so important to highlight how fast these Ultralisks are going to die to these Marauders, and then subsequently how one-sided Z-Pucks ends up making the game after he stops making the Ultralis. So there's some nice sniping on the ghosts. Huh, I shouldn't use the word sniping on the ghost. There's some nice killing on the ghost. See, there's one Ultra down, two Ultras down. Third Ultra is going to fall down. I'll just keep these health bars up. And even though this is kind of like a, a clusterfuck, just note these big red bars just rapidly diminishing. Look at that. Done. Just like kiting for just a moment. Let's see you just pop all those Ultras. And look at this. Suddenly, oh my goodness, remember how earlier Jinro was behind by 50 food? Well, now he's like ahead by 50 food. So, giant, giant, giant boost happening right now for our good friend Jinrovia. But then watch what happens. Um, so, I guess the early half of this daily, the lesson was to be focused on ghosts and why they're awesome and how to incorporate them in some of their excellent, amazing uses. But also... Uh, to point out how bad unit composition later on in the game can end up biting you in the ass. Because this is a great anti-Ultra Force. I'm actually trying to click on the Marines. Look how few Marines are here. Look at how many Marauders are here. It even goes off to, like, you know, a ton of... Yeah, what is that? Like, 36-some? I mean, that's tons and tons and tons of them. But once Z-Pux just returns back to making more Hydralis, if I just go to the production queue and note... Oh, there's only two Infestors. Okay. That, that, that could be improved. Um... But, as I'm going to speed this thing up, we're going to see a lot more emphasis on Hydralis and less on Ultralis. No new Ultralis have been made. Uh, well, there is one getting made. But, see, now when it's the Hydras and the Fungal Growths getting in there, these Marauders are not really doing um, as well as they were. Marauders are only really good against these giant armored units, Roaches, uh, against Ultralis and stuff like that. And they're damn good against them, don't get me wrong. Marauders are a great unit for their purposes, but... Um, I just feel like having too much of these, you know, just tech lab syndrome. Like, oh, I can have so many more barracks. You know, it's just it's just a little bit dangerous. Now, Z-Puck's doing some more brilliance here. Um, just doing a lot of good counterattack timings. Making sure his opponent doesn't end up getting any more bases. Because that's the one problem that Terran will have on a map like Metalopolis. It's hard to get as many bases as it is for the Zerg player, who can easily take, like, this main up here. So nice little high ground attack by Pucks. Did you see how fast all those Ultralis died? I mean, that was like mind blowing to me. Here it comes. Let's just watch this one more time. Look at how. I guess you know. I, I probably don't even need to spend all the time talking about how bad Ultralis are. I mean, Blizzard even themselves were like, "Oh yeah, totally needs uh, to be readjusted." But I mean, just look how fast these guys fell. Look, they didn't even do any damage. And look at the Hydralis now holding down like bosses, killing off his command center maybe. Oh no, killing off the Medivacs. Excellent. And poor Z Pucks is still making Ultras. I definitely think he should cancel that. Ultras are so expensive, they're 300 200. For any of you who thought that they were still 200 200 from the other game. From that other lowly game, Brood War. 
Now, this is a funny situation. Uh, you heard me talk about pinning in the earlier game, or earlier in this game. The idea that Jinro could get these Reapers and bounce around in Z-Pucks' main, killing off tons of stuff and causing tons of damage and just general hecticness. Um, now, because this is the only expansion for Jinro, he's kind of pinned, because if he moves down this lane, Z-Pucks swings up this lane. Easiest thing in the world. Easiest thing in the world. So, it's kind of funny because Z-Pux is actually in a really tough spot. Just going to this resource tab. Uh, Jinro could probably win if you push, like, right, right, right now. Uh, but there are three Ultralis and three Infestors. And here's some nice positioning by these Infestors. And the rest of the game is just one of these standard, dramatic, cool finishes. That ends up being super close. But there's just not really that many Marines right now. And I really think that that's something that would benefit the Terran a lot. Even though this happens... Um, as long as you just make sure to have medevacs around and you can EMP these. I mean, think about it. At the start, the ghosts were beautiful at EMPing these infestors and just crushing them. So why couldn't we just get more marines and get more ghosts and get less marauders? And if they try to get any infestors or any of those banelings, we snipe them or EMP them. I mean, it's a great way to bolster the marine force of your army. And plus, it works out nicely in terms of the uh, money composition. I mean, right here, we see that ghosts are 150-150, so that's going to leave a ton of leftover minerals. Plenty for us to make uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of marines. So we're seeing random changelings dying, and uh, I will speed this game up. I'll just wrap this game up, because, you know, it did crash uh, several, several trillion times, so I just want to make sure that... Uh, we just get it over with. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Changeling coming forward. Big stem. And now, watch watch how these Hydralists are just going to absolutely demolish this force. They are going to crush this force of Marauders. Uh, okay, that was bad. <laughs> Now, with Ravens and Marauders, maybe that can end up working out nicely, because now we have point defense drones. Absolutely cannot engage this. Now, this is a, a, a good lesson of Hydralis getting demolished. I mean, these point defense drones just absorb, like, a thousand-some hit points worth of damage. We do have some Ultralis on the side, which end up evaporating one down, two down, three down. And now it's just Hydralis left. How does this end up turning out? Good for Zerg. Yeah, that's right. Don't make ultras. <laughs> Lessons of this game. Ghosts are awesome. Don't make ultras. Get Broodlords. And the only reason this is as close as it is is because Z-Pux just did not have that many guys going into this battle and was kind of behind on the food count going into the battle. But with just a few Infestors and Hydros, he can hold off quite a bit. There's the Infestors going down. So nice little aggression by Jinro as he has his thousand barracks timing. But see, Zerglings, Hydralis, Infestors. At the end of the game, Z-Pux finally returns back to his roots, the success he was having at the early stages of the game. So I will speed things up quite a bit. And some tanks in there. That's actually nice. I actually like the tanks a lot. They're good at just doing damage to the Hydralis, which, again, are really, really good against uh, Marauders. A nice little unload, but this is always the issue whenever you try to do these sorts of things, is that that can happen. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Some Zergine has died here, I think. Just look for the number three. <laughs> oh, man. That actually is so totally awesome. I should I should watch my replays on the medium graphics settings. I never noticed this shit. This is fantastic. So I will just happily speed things up, and we will reach the conclusion of this game, where I'm actually going to turn on my webcam and cross my fingers and pray it doesn't become unstable and crash, and after which I will call up Gunrun and be like, hell, and hopefully he will fix my stream for maximum viewing pleasure. But once again, this is my first week ever doing this on Ustream, so, you know, just trying to set it up for maximum awesomeness. Note that the audio, you can hear me and you can hear StarCraft sound effects at the same time, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, more Zerglings, a handful of Hydrals and a lot of Bane Links. Great unit mix. Love this kind of unit mix. It's very The Little One-esque. And of course, The Little One, who you also know, like Jinro, is a giant European badass. So I, I love these tanks. I love so much except for the Marauders. Blah. I mean, 
Suddenly, Jinro stopped making ghosts, so now all these infestors are doing so much damage. Look at all these juicy EMPs I'm just fantasizing about right now. Just getting them off. Oh, yeah, on all these units. That would be perfect. And, you know, not too much to say at this point, as I've said time and time again. But, I mean, ghosts I'm starting to see now are a unit that not only allows for you to have good timing pushes but also allows for good in-game tactics. Advancing forward, cloaking, picking these things off, similar to how you poach forward with a science vessel in the original Brood War against Protoss, trying to find Templar, trying to find Defilers, that sort of thing. The ghosts now are serving that purpose a little bit more, thanks to their cloak. And some beautiful fungal growths and uh, 1A, 2A later. We see that Jinro's army is sadly diminishing. Uh, but because Jinro has amazing macro and a gold expansion, uh, it's going to be a little bit tough. Yep, and there, there are the ghosts again. Ooh, I'm liking the ghosts. But I feel like it was a little too late. I feel like in that last battle, Jinro lost a lot of momentum. And an insanely dramatic finish, I will say. I mean, this is pretty close right up till the end. And if those ultras weren't made, it wouldn't have been close right up to the end. <laughs> Point defense drones coming up. Big Hydralis arc. And good game. What a cool game. So, you know, I'm going to take a big risk. I'm going to open up my life cam. All right. I just double clicked it. All right. Let's see. It didn't crash, but the frames per second is really low. So I'm going to try to fix that. And if it crashes, then I'm pretty much really sorry. Let's see if I can uh, swap between these. Yeah, all right, there we go. All right, okay, okay. It's a little bit out of focus, but I'm not going to fiddle with anything. <laughs> I'm just going to happily take a few questions. And actually, I want to see if Jinro actually wants to get in on this chat. Um, want to get in on this chat. I'm going to see if um, he wants to call. I know he was watching this because he was one of the people that told me that my stream crashed when I was actually talking uh, to myself alone on the internet. So let's go ahead and... Uh, bring our good friend Jinro into this and see what comments he has about the game. Hello, Jinro. You're currently on the air. Oh, wow. I should probably close the stream. <laughs> so you hear a nice little echo of yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, for any of you curious what my headphones are, these are um, just the standard Bose headphones. They're amazing. They're like $130. This is like my second pair because the other one uh, just kind of ran out of juice. So, so, so tell me, Jinro. Um... In that game, I was commenting on, like, the fact that your Reaper Harass was doing some damage, but then uh, there was, like, this period where you weren't being very aggressive. Was that, yeah. like, intentional, or were you just, like, are you still fiddling with the build? Do you have any inclination to do a timing push the way I was talking about? Yes, but not on these positions. Well, okay, well Metalopolis is bullshit. I mean, like, there's not really much yeah, you cross can do. Yeah, cross positions is I'm never trying a timing push <laughs> and a matchup. <laughs> but I'm definitely getting dropships now. Like, uh -huh. uh, after the Reapers, because I think you can just do, like, one dropship as natural, one dropship in the main, and you uh -huh. just try to into that. If you watch the game versus Sparks from Sodak, this is actually from the ladder. Yeah. In the game on the, uh, in Sodak, I use dropships a lot more. Oh, because yeah, I was, like, awesome. used to the build then. And I actually did the timing push you mentioned, because the positions were 12 versus 9, so it was a lot oh, wow. easier to just follow up with it. Oh, watch that game. Is, did you send me that game earlier? Yeah, I did. Is that the temple? It, it's a lost temple. Yeah. It's that one. Well, downloading that game. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, so it's, I haven't seen the timing fun. push. How did it work out, the timing push, when you actually did end up using it? It, it did some damage, but ultimately he had enough speed links since I've been having been like really heavy Reaper, so he invested heavily in countering it, so... Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the total yeah, but it did get stopped. Yeah, yeah. So, I want to play around with that with you. I want you to choose Zerg against me, and I want to do their Reaper <laughs> stuff. You well, don't want to play my Zerg. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, slightly better than the computer. Do you ever feel as though um, you're getting too many Reapers in these games? Because, I mean, I've seen a lot of players get, like, four or five Reapers, but you seem to get, like, 20 yeah, yeah. I've even experienced um, it against you. Occasionally, occasionally, when I when I before I started making ghosts, before I did this and transitioned into marines, I would occasionally use die to mutilisks, which I'm sure you might remember. Yeah. But I feel like <laughs> as long as I can transition into ghosts 
it's okay if I make a lot of Reapers. If you watch the third game against Bucks and Metalopolis, I make like, I don't know, 15 Reapers probably. Uh-huh. And it's those positions, and it's, you know, it's fine. Well, that's because they can use cool so much damage. So I'm going to take some questions from the audience right now. Um, so first one is, let's see. Um, so here's a question directed to you by Oblog. Jinro, even if you lose a large battle, you always have a new army ready, and it seems like macro is not a problem for you. How do you choose when to micro your units and when to go back and macro? And I'm actually curious about this, especially with your um, ghost stuff going on. Is it just like you have a really easy hockey setup? Yeah, I don't go back to micro. I used, uh, I used to have every uh, barracks, every starport, every factory hotkeyed. Uh -huh. So I used to like, do it in the sequence, just spam out some snipes, click uh, four, then click spam marauders or marines. Uh -huh. I mean, it's it's so easy compared to StarCraft 1 to my macro. I'm not saying StarCraft 2 is like a bad game or an easy game. It's just that uh, macroing is uh -huh. a walk in the park. When you've gotten used to having like 20 barracks and not being able to hotkey more than like five of them. Yeah, because you, you just got like five... A -a 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 -a
Yeah. And then you have like four ghosts snipe everything, and it's like yeah. fuck. All right. I just well, lost five hundred gas. Yes, yeah, seriously, snipe against Mutilus sounds unbelievable, and something that I will delight in trying. So uh, I'm gonna hang up on you and wrap things up, and uh, then I want to train some. <laughs> yeah, I can play a few before I go to bed. All right, sweet. Well, uh, yeah. thanks so much for helping out, Jinro. Uh, I'll talk to you later, dude. Talk to you later. All right, everyone. Well, that is going to wrap up Day 9 Daily number 114. So that was a little bit ooh, a little wonky. I, I crashed the stream. Not you stream. Me. I did it. Yes. All the power is here, baby. I need to figure out how to fix that a little bit. Um, but... I'm going to sort out those issues. Obviously, I want those to be good. This will be up and on demand. Hope it ends up looking okay. That would be good. And tomorrow, I'm doing something a little bit um, special. Tomorrow, I'm doing a 2v2 that was played between my housemates. I actually got to sit behind people and watch this happen live because all my housemates have been playing StarCraft 2, and they're all copper, bronze level players. But the game was pretty interesting, and it'll just be a fun little examination of a you know an intense game that happened at a low level so we'll just have a good old time with that just because you know want to throw out some variety so you know what thank you so much for tuning in remember tune in to the ml whoops tune into the mlg showcase series uh, which i'll be doing with um with jp mcdaniel and that will probably be live soon it might be live now or later maybe We'll find out. It's on YouTube regardless, so you should watch all those. We currently have Slush, who's going to be playing against QXC, more top players from Root. Also coming up, I'm going to be casting the Asia vs. Euro Showmatch series hosted by GosuGamers.net and I believe SC187.com. Sure hope that's correct, because it's already recorded and on air. So, um, sincerest apologies for the stream crashing. I'm still trying to sort out my issues, but at the very least, you uh, can listen to music